This is actually one of the best MSNBC segments from like an MSNBC host. Not like an appearance from like a Bernie Sanders uh, campaign surrogate or whatever. But solely coming from the hosts on MSNBC. This is a really good clip. Okay, I mean, this is amazing. Now, uh, Joe Scarborough, Morning Joe, he's in, he has this fondness for Bernie Sanders. He really likes the guy, and you can tell from this clip. But And he's a Republican. He calls himself a small government conservative, but he just loves Bernie Sanders as a person. And this is something that it kind of exists with a lot of different people. But I'm going to let you guys check this out. We're going to come back and talk about this. But I tell you, the New York Times yeah. uh, it, it reported, uh, John Heilman, that the Trump people are scared to death. And Donald Trump is scared to death of Bloomberg. And they want Bernie Sanders. Now, I think he can take that with a grain of salt because Hillary wanted Trump. Yeah. And I still, that was a bad I, I, listen, I, I, I know this sounds crazy. I'm still not so sure that Bernie lined up against Trump doesn't end up driving Donald Trump crazy because he can call out yes. the hypocrisy. Because what's that? I know we all talk about his personal failings. Everybody knew that he's personal failing. But what's the biggest lie of Donald Trump's presidency, of, of, of what he promised? It was that he was going to be a man for the working class, that he was going to be a man for, for, for blue collar voters in Wisconsin to New Hampshire, out to Oregon. He's lied. He's given tax cuts to the richest multinational corporations in the world. And I guarantee you, there are a lot of people working behind us that because of the Trump tax cut are paying more in taxes than Amazon. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I just say the following things. One, a, a battle between Mike Bloomberg and Bernie Sanders would be incredibly compelling and would be a really brutal thing for the Democratic Party to go through, to see you know, a plutocrat against. The, the, the ideological chasm of the party would be laid wide open, and I think it would be, if it went on for many months, would not be, it might, it might turn out to be healthy for the party, it might also turn out to be really destructive. The second thing I'll say is Bernie Sanders has become an incredibly consistent performer. Boy, okay. he is good. You saw him in the debate on Friday night. People take him on. When people take him on, he it just it bounces right off him. Yeah. He's done a lot of presidential debates. He's very good now. Can, 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 really can, I, can good. I ask this question? He's really good. Because Sanda. here's the deal. I'm a small government conservative. I think ideologically, I, 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 nothing adds up. It's insanity what he's talking about. That's my opinion yeah. ideologically, right? But? And yet... When I see that guy on the stage, I look at him like, okay, I like this guy. I He's pissed watching. off just like me. And I've got a feeling, okay, you know what? You know what? Okay, he'll never get any of this through, but, it, but he'll fight for the American people. And then, of course, two seconds later, I snap back and remember, <laughs> but I'm a small government conservative. But he is such a compelling presence well, and owns the stage when he's on it. He's not only really good. like. Mike Bloomberg is, was a terrible candidate. Like, he's a yeah. bad, he's not good at doing this. And they've run this advertising strategy largely to keep him no like the him. Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. We see him there's going to come a moment where Mike interviews? Bloomberg, there's going to come a moment where Mike Bloomberg's going to have to step out in front of the curtain. And I think there's, it's possible where after all this ad spending and getting him to this place where he's at, wherever he is in the polls, people all over the country are going to be like, hey, let's take a look at this guy. And little Mike Bloomberg's going to walk out and say, and people are going to say, that's the guy? What? Really? Look at this. City, Des Moines, Iowa, Democrats all across the country, they're wringing their hands over the concept of Bernie Sanders being the nominee, okay? Bernie Sanders can't be president. You hear it over and over I again. I know. Why do they Who is that? president today? Exactly. Right. Donald Trump Stop is president that today. Bernie, I'm, I'm Bernie, Bernie has this. not only been consistent, but he's been talking about the one thing, if you scrape everything else away, the one thing that counts this year and every year, yeah. the weekly paycheck that people take. I, I'll tell you what. Constantly undermined by his own party. I knew I found because my old old one went out right. those voice memos and I found a January of 2016 interview with uh, David Axelrod mm. and what I was saying is isn't it funny David that no Republican thinks Trump can win we're scared of Trump or Jeb and he's like oh Trump and he and he, he, he 
he, like Pluff, laid it all out. So again, that's why I say, when everybody's saying Bernie can't win, mm. go back and look at all of these suck-ups to Donald Trump, all of these people who have shamed themselves, humiliated themselves in front of their children and, and their grandchildren in history, go back and listen to what they're saying. Trump, like we're, oh. we're of course criticizing him and holding him to account, but all of these Republicans, they said Donald Trump could never win. Mm -hmm. Remind me of all the Democrats who are now saying Bernie Sanders can never win. That was, again, a really awesome clip. Not just Joe, not just Mika, but also the guests making some good-ass points. Um, I very much enjoyed the Bloomberg comment of, like, you know, he, he's we really don't see much of Bloomberg. It's a good point. He's just doing all of these ad buys. He's buying up a ton of ads everywhere. Because he's got so much money. By the way, we need to overturn Buckley v. Vallejo because someone shouldn't be allowed to do that. They shouldn't be allowed to just pour all their cash in. Um, and so that's something we have to do as well. But I do like how he says, yeah, that'd be a horrible candidate. And imagine, just imagine for a second that Bloomberg, a plutocrat, okay, someone whose power is derived from their cash, okay, uh, against Bernie Sanders. That would be a really hilarious race, and I hope that's what it is because... If they sort of go at it, I think it's going to be pretty obvious who the candidate's going to end up being. I mean, if you think that Bloomberg, little Bloomberg, as he said there, um, you know, is going to win that race, I think is absolutely hilarious. He's also got a very shady past. You guys all know about the stop and frisk. And then you, of course, know about in 2004, he went to the, R I believe it was the RNC. He endorsed George W. Bush, said, I love your war on terror, Georgie, keep it up. So, all of that stuff. The dude's a Republican. He's not really a Democrat. He's just a plutocrat is really what he is. He's all about his money, and he's all about that power that comes from that money. Now, I do like how they talk about how Bernie Sanders can be president, and I like the line that is drawn, that sort of parallel that's drawn between the previous election cycle with Donald Trump, because the whole way through... Everybody at each step of the way was like, Donald Trump isn't going to win. Now, I thought so, too, in the beginning, for sure. And even throughout, even throughout up until the general, I didn't think he was going to win. I had no idea he was going to win. Um, but it's true that literally every step of the way, they said Trump was going to win. You know, oh, when he won a primary, when he was leading in the polls, they're like, ah, oh, he's going to dip. And then when he was, he won a primary, oh, look, he's just got one primary. He's done so now. Um, and then, you know, even once he became the Republican candidate, they were like, he's going to lose to Hillary for sure. And so every step of the way, they're like, no, 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 no. That's what they did every fucking step of the way, okay? Um, and so that's kind of what's going on, same here. It's an interesting parallel to see. And so we will see if ultimately we get the same result. Hopefully we do. Hopefully Bernie Sanders gets elected. That would be a very ideal scenario, of course. Um, and then Mika there, of course... Uh, talking about how the Democrats are trying to undermine Bernie Sanders. Uh, the voter protection director is a Pete Buttigieg supporter in the Nevada caucus. We saw what they did in the Iowa caucus. And so, uh, yeah, they're very obviously trying to undermine Bernie Sanders. There's no debate to be had about that. Let's keep it real here, folks. And so, uh, this is just a great clip. I mean, I'm sure you enjoyed the hell out of that clip. And you don't really expect that from an MSNBC segment because... Typically, MSNBC is straight garbage when there isn't a Bernie surrogate on there, but that was a great, uh, great, great clip.